Hey y'all, it's Katie. Welcome back to From My Vanity. And as you guys saw from the title, today we're going to be doing a little bit of reflecting back at 2018 and all the boxy charms that we got. I was kind of wanting to do this myself just out of curiosity to see if boxy charms, when you look back at a whole year, if it's actually worth it. So I thought it'd be really fun to sit down and do a video and share with you guys all the products that we got throughout 2018 in boxy charms boxes and then just let you guys know, did I keep them? Were they worth it for me? That sort of thing. My idea for this video came actually when I was kind of thinking back on 2018 and wondering if I was still buying BoxyCharm for myself, was it worth it in the end? Now, if you didn't know, at the beginning of 2018, I was purchasing BoxyCharm on my own as a regular subscriber of theirs, and then they reached out to me and placed me on their PR list, I think sometime in the summer, maybe towards the fall, not 100% sure, and so now I'm receiving it as PR. I don't have to pay for it, but I still thought this would be informative and kind of fun to look back and see if I were, if I did pay for each box in 2018, how much did I spend for the year, and how much was it actually worth it? Like, how much did I end up saving if you want to say the products that I still have in my collection that I still enjoy using that I was able to get good use out of it what was the value of that and also to compare what I would have spent on a whole year of BoxyCharm. So I think that is about all the introduction that is needed but before I do get into talking about each of the individual products that we got throughout the year in our boxes I didn't want to say if you want to see for yourself if BoxyCharm is worth it keep note as we go along and start adding up the products that you would enjoy or you would have at least got use out of that way at the end you can see for yourself if it would have been worth it for you know paying for a whole year year or just receiving BoxyCharm for a whole year if it would have been worth it for you. Because in this video, everything I'm going to be sharing is from my perspective and whether it's worth it for me, for my skin types, for my preferences, that sort of thing. So if you want to see for yourself, get out a calculator and start calculating, but let's just jump right into it. Anyway, so the first one is Dr. Brandt's Pores No More Luminizing Primer. I have very oily skin, so luminizing primer scared me and I didn't, I didn't even touch it. That was a $38 value product, but it was zero, basically like zero to me because it wasn't worth it for me in that box. Also, I should say that for the most part, when I can, I'm gonna get my prices from Sephora or Ulta because I feel like that is a popular place to purchase items from. And then if I can't get it at those two places, I'll go to the brand's website. So those are a couple of the ways I found out the prices and that's kind of how I calculated whether this is valuable, the, the box is valuable to me or not. Then next I had the It Cosmetics Brow Power Universal Brow Pencil that retails for $24. And that was a hit for me because I do enjoy that brow product. I have not opened it yet because I have so many brow products and pencils open right now but it is in my drawer to pull out once I finish up at least one more I'll probably pull it out I do really enjoy it so that for me was valuable and was worth the $24 from that box we also got the crown pro glam metals palette for $14.99 this was a big dud for me because it was an all like shimmer palette it just wasn't that great if I'm remembering correctly I used it probably two three times and I just remember the shimmers or like the metallic metal shades being kind of disappointing. I just didn't think it was all that amazing. So that was a big dud for me and I ended up giving it away to one of my sisters. Next was a Pure Cosmetics Bronze and Brighten Cheek Palette. This retailed for $34. And while I thought it was a really nice highlight, the problem was that there was a bronzer and a blush shade that I would never use. So there was only one out of three products in that palette that I really thought was very pretty and I would get any use out of. So because of that, I ended up decluttering. I just I didn't want that much shimmer and reflectiveness going on on my face. And the last product in the box was a Grande Cosmetics Grande Lip. It's like a lip plumper at that value for $27. And this was a big dud for me because one, I didn't see that much plumping aspect, but the reason it was a big dud for me was because I didn't like the smell slash taste of it. I ended up getting rid of it. So for the month of January, the only win in that box was the It Cosmetics Brow Power Universal Brow Pencil for $24. So even though everything else was a dud, at least kind of came out even with that product because it was you know worth a little more than the value of the box. So moving on to February, I got the Naked Cosmetics Holographic Highlighter Palette. This retailed for $39.99. So I wasn't into different color highlighters, so I ended up giving that to one of my sisters to play with, but I have heard from other people who do enjoy different color highlighters, and they say that that is a good palette. We also got the Cover FX Shimmer Veil product. I tried this so many times. I tried to make it work, creased and cracked, and just did not look good no matter how I tried to wear it on my eyelids. So that value for $28, but once again, didn't work out for me. We also got the Vintage Cosmetics Smoky Eye Pencil that valued at $21, but that thing was painful to try to put in your waterline. Had a hard time coming off on my actual eyelid, like even if I put it on top, 
it wasn't the it wasn't a nice pencil I definitely wouldn't recommend it that wasn't a value in the box for me next is the seraphin botanicals lip buffer for 24 and I actually forgot I pulled out all the stuff that I still have in my collection so I do have that it cosmetics but anyway we're gonna just keep on trucking here it is right here I am glad to have it and it, it's valuable in my collection because I didn't have to go out and buy it for myself I have this and you know as you can see it's lasted a long time but I do enjoy having it so yes this was a value in the box for me then the last thing in the box was the crown pro trio brush set retail for $29.99 this is what it looks like and I don't own any of those brushes anymore because I didn't think any of them were that good and I have so many other brushes that I prefer so in the month of February for that box the only thing that was of value to me was the seraphin botanicals lip buffer which retail for $24 so at least breaking even there. So moving on to the March box, we got the Pure and BoxyCharm palette retailing for $36 not worth that. I did not enjoy this palette at all. I've mentioned it in my worst in makeup from 2018. It wasn't good quality at all and I have gotten rid of that palette. Next we got the Butter Linen Double Decker Mascara retailing for $20 and this I did get a lot of great use of. I actually just put it in my empties bin. I thought that was a very nice mascara and I would not be mad to own it again and it's nice to get high-end mascaras in boxes like these. So yeah I really did enjoy that mascara and would not mind uh, purchasing it again in the future. We also got the South Main Under Eye Gels. These retailed for $15 and I did enjoy them. Now with all eye gels and face masks, there's something I would never purchase for myself, but getting them in BoxyCharm, I really do enjoy them. So getting it along with a couple other things makes it worth it for me. So I was glad to get those. Next in the box was a pretty vulgar Make Them Blush, and I got the shade 18, Hush Blush. But it is this little blush here, and I think it's really pretty. I'm totally happy to have it in my BoxyCharm because I didn't have to pay full price for it. And I forget if I said, but this retails for $26. And last up in that box was the Vintage Cosmetics Company Smoky Eye Brush Set. This is what it looks like, says it retails for $21.76, at least that's what I could find online, and I didn't keep any of these brushes. So for me, that wasn't a value in the box. So for March, I had three products that were a hit and two that were a fail. In April, we got the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Vacuum Cleaner. This retailed for $42. I do not own it, but I did put this as a plus because it would have been more valuable to me if I needed a cleaner, a, you know, a mask. Right now, I'm just so overlogged with skincare that I didn't want to keep it, so I ended up getting rid of it. So typically, I feel like it would have been valuable to me but since I was so overlogged with new makeup to or new skincare to try out this for the sake of this video I'm putting this as not valuable to me in the box next we got the ColourPop cosmetics I got the semi precious but I ended up trading or like selling it and trading I can't even remember what I did I think I sold it and then bought the ColourPop my little pony palette because that was also an alternative you could have gotten and I didn't get it in my box and I, I wanted it so I did get it this retails for $16 and in my opinion this was totally worth it to get in the box I really did have so much fun creating looks with this palette anytime I pulled this out to use it I kind of had to fight my daughter for it because she was like oh, horses mama and I'm like oh no this is mine I I know it looks like it's yours, but it's mine. Next, we got the Tardis Pro Glow Liquid Highlighter. This retailed for $29, but it did not add value to the box for me because I do not like messing with liquid products. So got rid of that. We also got the Brow Gal Tinted Brow Gel. This retailed for $22. And I actually pulled it to use this month. I do find value in it, but it isn't my favorite and it's not one that I can see myself repurchasing. But still, it is valuable because I'm getting a lot of great use out of it instead of having to go out and purchase another one. So. This, in my opinion, did add value to the box for me. And then last in the box was the Adesse High Definition Liquid Lipstick. This retailed for $24. And while this wasn't my favorite, if I didn't have a daughter, I would still have it in my collection because I do really like the color. And it's a nice, very like pigmented gloss. I wouldn't call it a liquid lipstick. So I do like it. I did think it was valuable and I would still use it on occasion. But actually this has become my daughter's, so it's pretty darn beat up and used and well loved. So this is my daughter's, but still it adds value to the box for me. So for April, there were three hits and two misses for me. Moving on to May, we got the Cover FX Blurring Primer for $38, this little baby right here. And this did add value to the box for me because obviously I still have it and I do use it on occasion. So it's nice to have this for a fraction of the price. We also got the Aesthetica Pro Brush P12 Brush. This set at retail for $27. I got rid of that because it just, it wasn't nice quality. It was very sparse. It didn't blend out product very well and it didn't even feel nice on the face. So that did not add value to the box. We got the Han Skincare Cosmetics Lip gloss this retails for $15 and when I initially got it I just thought it was fine but I've actually grown to really enjoy it and really really prefer it over the course of the months that I've owned it this is definitely adds value to the box for me because I really do like having it we also got the pretty vulgar the ink gel eyeliner this retail for $24 I actually did declutter it but I am putting it as a pro in the box for me because if I didn't have the current system that I do have 
I would have kept it. And I say that because where I keep my eyeliners is a very narrow drawer and I couldn't fit it in there. And I didn't want to just stick it somewhere odd. And actually my sisters were wanting to get into eyeliner. So I was like, you know what? You guys can have this. It's beautiful. And that's honestly the biggest reason I wanted to keep it. I know that sounds funny, but I think it looks really, really cute. And since I got it in my BoxyCharm, I would have kept it. That's another thing that I would never have purchased myself. Or if I did, I would have returned it. But since I got it in a BoxyCharm, I would have kept it and got use out of it. So we also got another Aesthetica brush set. It was a pro three piece eyeliner brush, brow and spoolie brush set. They say this retails for $45, nowhere near in my book. And I honestly only have the spoolie left. I decluttered both of the other brushes because I didn't think they were any good, but I kept the spoolie because it actually does come in handy if I ever get like mascara on my eye. It, it serves a purpose. But with that said, I have a couple other brushes that have spoolies on it that would also serve a purpose. So for me, that did not add value to the box. And last up, we got the Pure Cosmetics Sculptor Palette. This retailed for $30, and I like the highlighters, but the contours I found too difficult to blend with and use. It just didn't work for me, so I ended up decluttering that. So out of the May box, I liked three things and did not like three things. Poof, gotta pick it up. Uh, moving on to June, we got the Luxie three-piece Flawless Complexion set. This retailed for $42. And this really did add value to the box because I still own all three and still use all three pretty regularly. As you can see, two of them are dirty, totally adds value to the box. We also got the Baddington Monroe Silk Lashes. These retailed for $28 and I actually have them on my eyes today so you don't see them. Um, I think I've only worn these twice before this so they're not something I pull for often because they don't have the easiest band. But with that said, if I didn't have any other lashes in my collection, this is definitely one I would wear whenever I did feel like wearing lashes. So it did add value to the box. I liked getting another pair of false lashes in the box. We got the Olimar Cosmetics Rana del Caribe. <laughs> I feel like I butchered that, but the this palette came in the box. This retails for $28, and this totally added value to the box for me, for sure. I think it is gorgeous. They all lasted really nice on my eyes, and these shimmers were stunning, so definitely a pro in the box. We got the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. I believe it valued at $20 because it wasn't the full size. It was just a little travel size. This did not add value to the box for me because I hated the scent, and it was so strong. It stayed around all day. Did not like it, so I know it's super popular, but I ended up giving it to my mom because I didn't like the scent. We also got the Jante Blue Waterproof Eyeliner Pencil. This retail for $5. We received one the year before in 2017. I remember hating it, so when we got that another one in the box, I was like, yep, nope, putting it right into my giveaway drawer. It did not touch it. It was only five bucks, but still big disappointment there. And then we got the Ofra Cosmetics Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick. This retails for $17. And while this isn't my favorite liquid lipstick because it doesn't dry down completely and still transfers everywhere, I do enjoy it. It is very comfortable to wear. I did like the color, so it did add value to the box for me. So for the June box, there were four products that I liked and two that I did not. Moving on to the July box, we got the Dr. Brandt Needles No More. This retailed for $42 and I actually did enjoy it and still use it. I have been using it up a lot. So definitely something that added value to the box. I really do enjoy using it. I do think it makes a difference on when I put makeup on top of it. I'm very thankful to have gotten it in my BoxyCharm because I do enjoy using it. We also got the Chella Tantalizing Taupe Eyebrow Cream. This retail for $26. And while this isn't my favorite brow product because it's a little tedious with how you put this on your face, it still adds value to the box because it's a brow product that I can use. It works well enough. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy how it wears and all that stuff. So I don't have to go out and buy another product and it saves me money that way. So it was still a win in my book. We also got the Wander Beauty Mascara. I think it's Unlashed Mascara, Unleashed Mascara. I can't remember what it's called. This retailed for $24 and this did add value to the box, but I cannot find it. I think I took it on a trip and lost it. I don't know where it is, but if I wasn't so careless, I still was using it even though it wasn't my favorite. I didn't think it gave that amazing lashes. It was a nice first step mascara and it's how I would have used it up. And maybe if I ever find it, I'll continue to use it that way. But Long story short, it did add value to the box. We got the Note Luminous Silk Compact Blusher. This retails for $11.99 and it's my first Note product. And it's actually something that has really intrigued me on the brand and I've been eyeing them at Ulta. I wanna try more from this brand. I thought this was a fantastic blush and obviously it added value. I still use it, I still enjoy it. Last up in that box, we got the Crown Pro Eyeshadow Palette in Fuego. It retailed for $29.95 and I ended up decluttering this. So for me, this did not add value to the box. While it was an okay eyeshadow palette and it did well enough, I thought it created decent looks. It just wasn't my jive when it came to the looks that I like to create. I got rid of it. So for me, that didn't add value to the box. So out of July, four hits, one miss. Okay, so moving into August, we got the House of Lashes Lashes in Temptress. This retails for $9 and this totally worth 
worth it for me. I have worn these lashes so many times. They wear and sit really nicely, so definitely a win from that box. We also got one of the Smashbox Be Legendary lipsticks. These retail for $21. I don't I don't remember the color. This is just one of them. I have, I have a bunch of them, but I really do like their formula. I think they're very comfortable. They go on nicely on the lips. They stay decently. And I was excited to see such a nice quality lipstick in the box. So for me, this was a win again. This is the box we got, the Bang Beauty Chocolate Liner. This retail for $22 and I ended up decluttering it. I might even have thrown it away because I just did not like that formula. It was very hard to work with. I did not enjoy that. Did not add value to the box. We got the Laura Lee Los Angeles Party Animal Palette. This retail for $19. I'm putting this as a pro because while I thought some of the shadows in that palette were terrible, there were still half of them. I think three colors that I actually did enjoy and thought were looked really nice and the orange especially blended nicely. I like that really neon green. I have it in my closet somewhere, so I don't have it. Here's a picture of it. But um, I actually kind of decluttered it in a video recently, but I am going to declutter part of it. I'm gonna actually depot them, the shades that I do like, and then get rid of the rest. But since I do like some of them, it still adds value to the box. So for the sake of this video and adding it up at the end, I'm gonna say that the palette was worth it for me. I wouldn't have purchased it myself, but since I did get it in the box, I do enjoy those colors. I'm going to take those colors out and still get some use out of them. We got the Adesse Nail Cuticle Oil. This retail for $18 and I actually never use this because I wear press on nails a lot and I don't want to put oil on top of that. But if you can't see, this is empty because my daughter loves to use it. She started out using it pretending it was like nail polish and she would paint her nails, but she actually has really dry cuticles and she has a bad habit of picking. So we've been trying to help her break that habit before it gets too bad. So we've been letting her put this cuticle oil on her nails and it's been helping that, you know, keep them soft so she doesn't need to pick. So this actually turned out to be a value in the box because my daughter used it and you know loved enjoyed the process of putting it on but I do think it also helped nourish her cuticles and make them softer so $18 it was worth it surprisingly I didn't think it would be for me but we did use this all the way up. And last, we got the Wander Beauty Eye Masks for $25. There were three of them in this little $25 you know, value. And as I said in the beginning, this did add value to the box for me because I do enjoy having gel masks to use when I kind of want to have a little pamper. So while this wouldn't be something I purchased for myself, it did add value to the box. So five products were a hit from that box. One product was a no. Moving on to September, we got the Laura Geller Baked Blush and Brighten in the shade Tropic Hues, and this retails for $28. I have found that I really do like this and I actually enjoy having it in my collection because Luminoso is a very summery type of blush so it was nice to have a deeper hued one that has that shimmer in it so yes I did not think I would like this but I actually do really enjoy it and I'm glad I have it. Next up was a Butter London Stroke of Wow eyeliner. This retail for $19 and actually I'm putting this as a plus. The reason I really enjoyed this from this box was because it helped me get a really sharp line. Yes this was worth it to me because I have gotten a lot of really good use out of it since I got it in September. Next we got the Alamar Ojito Brush set this retail for $18 and this did add value to the box because these are brushes I use very regularly. I do enjoy these brushes and they're so easy to see in my collection because they're green so they stand out. We also got the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale palette. This retailed for $35 and I really do enjoy this. I'm trying not to blind you guys and I have my other hand holding my phone right now. But anyway, I thought this was a really nice palette and I created some pretty looks with it. Um, I had a couple cons to it. I had a couple kind of nitpicks with the color choices and some of the colors being very similar but overall, I am still keeping this in my collection because I love the cool tone looks I could get out of this. And I like having it in my collection because it brings something unique to my collection. And last up, we got the Lorac Pro Liquid Lipstick in, I got the shade specifically Deep Burgundy. This retail for $19. This did add value to the box because I do like their formula. I think it's a decent liquid lipstick formula. The dark color was a little bit more streaky, but overall, I still thought it was nice. And I am keeping it around. I like having dark liquid lipsticks for when I'm in the mood. So yes, this did add value. So from September, pretty much everything was a hit. That, that, I think that's the first one from the year, but yeah, I liked everything from that box. Okay, so October was a little weird because two products were actually missing from my box. I was supposed to receive the Ahave Mineral Hand Cream that valued at $10, and if I had received that, I would have gotten good use out of it because I would have used it for my daughter, so I'm putting that as it would have been a plus for me. And I also should have gotten the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Moisture Leave-In Mask for $16, and again, I would have gotten good use out of this because I would have used it for my own hair, and I like getting those type of things in boxes because that's definitely hair is something I don't like to 
to spend my own money on. So $16 would have been worth it. We got the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara in that month's box. This retails for $24. I'm actually using it right now. It's really nice. So yes, it did add value. We also got the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. This retails for $20 and I do enjoy having it. I got the shade Bow and Arrow. And while it's deeper on me than I thought it would be, I do like it. I like having another one of her colors. And then we also got the Pure Cosmetics Midnight Masquerade Face Palette. I really enjoyed the face side of it, but all the eyeshadows I did not enjoy. There was so much glitter fallout. There, It was all mainly shimmer or glitter. There was only one shade that was matte. So I ended up decluttering that. That retail for $38, but it did not add value the, to the box for me. So for October, four hits, one miss. November box, we got the Luxie Luminous Eye Brush Set. This had a four piece set and it retails for $30. I could have sworn to you I had all four here, but I'm only holding up three, so maybe my daughter came and walked off with one. But I did keep all four, and I really do like them. I think they are fantastic, and they are so well used in my makeup collection. $30, totally worth it in the box. I also got the Farah Brushes Galaxy Gold Tweezers. These retail for $12, and I feel like I've raved about them so much, and I still really do love them. I love the double-sided aspect. It's weird to get excited for tweezers, but I got super excited for this. In this box, we also got the Cover FX Glitter Drops. These retailed for $44, but they didn't add value of, to the box for me because I don't like, I don't like to deal with the cream and liquid cheek products. We also got the Bodyography Pro Makeup Brush Cleaner and this retailed for $12 and actually have like a drop left. So I've already gone through it. I got this in November. So definitely I went through it very fast, but I really did like it. It worked well enough, did not work for liquid products, but worked really nicely for my eye brushes. And then last up in that box was the Ace Beauté's Grandiose Palette. This retail for $24.99. This was a decent palette quality wise, but for me, it's just not my colors. It wasn't something I was gonna keep around. So after I did the review, I already went and put it in a box to pass on to one of my sisters to have. So for me, this didn't add value to the box. So for November, we had three hits and two fails. And then Last up for December's box, we got the Cosmetics Detox Charcoal Mask. This retailed for $30. I have it. It's in my my bathroom. I forgot to bring it out, but I have been using this. I will continue to use it up. It did add value to the box because it was nice to get another you know type of mask that I didn't have to spend money on. So I do enjoy it. I do like that we got it in the box. We also got the Pretty Vulgar Powder Room Translucent Powder. This retails for $32. And while it's not something I can just throw on my face whenever I feel like it, I definitely have to be aware of the foundation I'm wearing because I did find that it oxidized my foundation and made my foundation get darker. But for the purposes of this video, I am still currently keeping it in my collection and I did enjoy it. I thought it set my under eyes very nicely, my face very nicely, so it was a hit. We also got the Tarte Tartise Shimmering Lip Paint. This retail for $20, but it was a fail for me because I don't like shimmery metallic lip products, lip paints, no thank you. I put that in my giveaway box. We also got the Bodyography Lip Pencil that also went into my giveaway box. This retail for $12, but I'm just not big into lip pencils, so I didn't even touch it. And last up was a Suva Beauty Protégé palette. This retail for $34, and I actually really do like this palette. I have to be careful because one is shattered, the highlighter. This is my first product from Suva, but it's definitely intrigued me to try more from the brand, and for getting it in BoxyCharm, it was totally worth it in my book. All right, so there you have it. That's everything that I received from BoxyCharm in 2018, and I've already gone ahead and added up the total. Before we do that, I want to say that I'm going to look at this from the assumption that I paid for all the boxes. Now, before I got on the PR list, I was, a, as I said, a regular subscriber of BoxyCharm, and at the time, I was paying for boxes three months at a time. I didn't want to commit to a whole year. I, three months was just like my sweet spot, so I was paying, I think it was $59 for three months, and adding that up for a whole year, that would have been $236 towards BoxyCharm for the entire year. And I went through and added up all the products that I said were a hit for me from the boxes, and the value of those products was $800. $97.99. That number kind of blew me away. So yeah, that is the total. Wow. Now I do try to keep in mind that for a lot of these products, they're not products that I would have purchased full price. I am the type of girl to wait for a sale, but even still at a sale price, I still think that that's a huge difference between paying $236. I got almost $900 worth of products for less than 300. That's a pretty steep sale in my opinion. So I was just blown away by that number. I just added it up right before filming this last part and I'm just like, wow, that's a lot. So yeah, what do you guys think? I'm kind of blown away by that number. I feel like for, especially for BoxyCharm, people always talk about, oh, I didn't use this and I didn't end up using this. And just, you always hear about the fails from BoxyCharm, I feel like, but still, if you really think about it and look at everything that's a win and do the math like I just did, 
that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. What do you guys think? So yeah, that is about all that I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you were keeping track. What was your total of products that were a hit for you? What was the total value? But yeah, I thought this would just be a really fun video to sit down and share with you guys, kind of look back at everything we got in 2018 and look at the value of it. And I feel like in my opinion, for me and my purposes and why I enjoy BoxyChime, it is totally worth it for me. So let me know what you guys think down below, but that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too long-winded, but I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye, guys.